There are so many verses that speak about the reward of those who bear patience in this world and the next. Innama yuwaffa sabiruna ajrahum bi ghayri hisab. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recompenses those who bear patience in an unlimited fashion. Unlimited. In this world and the next, you will see the fruits of your patience. But if you're not patient, impatient, what will happen? You taste a little bit of it. I am not saying that you need to endure oppression. I'm not saying that. I am saying that when you do good by being patient where you can be patient, Allah never ever throws the reward of those who do good. I want to give you the most beautiful example. Yusuf alayhi salam, the Prophet Joseph, may peace be upon him. I'm sure you know the story. It is amazing. Allah says in the Quran, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ القصص. We are relating to you the most beautiful of stories. That was the story of Yusuf, the Prophet Joseph. The whole chapter is named after him. And it is the only story that is found in one place from the beginning to the end. At the end, you know the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. What did they do to him? They tried to harm him. They wanted to kill him. They put him in the well. They did this to him. They did that to him. They did so much. They literally plotted against him. They tried their luck against him. They threw him in the pit. He got up. Someone sold him. Someone bought him. Someone tried to lure him to committing a sin. They jailed him and he continued subhanallah bearing patience. How many things? Plenty one after the other. So many things. At the end, Allah made him a powerful person. He was in authority. And finally, his brothers came in. He was so delighted, but obviously he needed to deal with this matter. He had a good heart. How many of us have a good heart? It's not too late. You can develop your heart. You can develop the qualities of your heart. You can eradicate the hatred you have. You can work on the jealousy, the envy, the ill feeling. People get jealous very quickly. It's becoming more and more common. You have a beautiful car. You have subhanallah, a beautiful robe. People become jealous. I can't believe it. It's becoming worse. Work on these qualities. Look at Yusuf alayhi salam. He asks his brothers, Allah makes mention of it. Subhanallah. Allah says, He asked his brothers, Do you know what you did to Joseph and his brother when you were ignorant? Look at him blaming the devil. Look at him blaming shaitan when you were ignorant, which means I excuse you. Do you know what you did to Yusuf and his brother? They immediately thought to themselves, it's impossible for anyone to know what was done to Yusuf and his brother, unless it's him himself. They looked at him and they said, what's the possibilities of you being Yusuf? Are you Yusuf? He says, yes, I am Yusuf. This is my brother. Allah has favored. That's the word. He didn't say, I hate you guys. I'm going to fix you guys. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to make sure I'm the leader today. I'm going to jail you. I'm gonna... That's what we would do, I think. A lot of us would do that to our own spouses, let alone someone else. We would do it. I'm going to fix you. I'll show you. I'm going to make you regret your decision, etc. etc. We have bad words. So what happens? We suffer as a result of our own plot. 
We struggle, we suffer because we have a bad plot. Don't do that. Try to find within your heart the soft spot that will look and learn from the stories Allah makes mention of. He doesn't talk about it for nothing. He talks about it because he wants you to learn a lesson from it. So he says, Allah favored us. You know what that means? In one sentence, he told them, no matter what you did, what you tried from the beginning to the end, look at how Allah gave me as a direct result of your action. Had you not plotted against me from the beginning, I would not have been here. Sometimes we lose a job. We get so upset, but we don't realize Allah wants to give you a better job. Only after five years, you're going to say, Alhamdulillah. You might start your own business and it might flourish. And Allah says, look, you were so upset when you lost the job. Look at where you are today. So be happy. My brothers and sisters, Ista'inu bi sabri wa salah. So long as you are bearing patience and your salah is in order, nothing evil can happen to you. No, it cannot. Yusuf alayhi salam says, I am Yusuf. This is my brother. Allah has favored us. For indeed, whoever is conscious of Allah and they bear patience, Allah will never waste the reward of the, those who do good. Innahu man yattaqi wa yasbir, fa inna Allah la yudhi'u. Those, indeed those who are conscious of Allah. Conscious of Allah meaning you fulfill the obligations as best as you can. You abstain from the prohibitions as best as you can. You seek the forgiveness of Allah as best as you can. That is the consciousness of Allah. Consciousness of Allah is to create a barrier between you and Allah's displeasure by fulfilling His commands and staying away from prohibitions. That is the consciousness of Allah. It is called Taqwa Allah. So whoever is conscious of Allah and bears patience, Allah will not waste the reward of those who do good. Imagine Allah calls them muhsineen. Allah says they are the ones who do good. Who is a good, who is a doer of good? A doer of good is a person who has taqwa and sabr. How do I know it? Because it is in this verse and it is in several other verses as well. Allah will not waste your reward. When you were patient, Allah will give you. The problem is, my brothers and sisters, in patience, we become impatient. You know what that means? We say, okay, I'm going to forgive. And after a while you say, oh Allah, I'm still waiting. You are becoming impatient. That's why the hadith says, Beautiful narration. When you make dua to Allah, you call out to Allah, Oh Allah, give me, Oh Allah, grant me. Allah says, we will give to all of you for as long as you are not impatient. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked a question, what is this impatient? What do you mean impatience? He says, for one of you to say, I called out and I called out and I called out, but Allah didn't answer. That means you became impatient. Allah knows. When I say, Oh Allah, I'm looking for a job. Firstly, I need to develop a link with Allah. You know, when you know someone, when you are close to someone, you say, give me a job. You don't have a job. Come, come, come. I'll give you double the salary. Take it. Why? Because I'm friends with you and you're a big boss. Allah is bigger than anyone else. So when you have a good relationship with him, what are you looking for? The Prophet ﷺ clearly says, get close to Allah during times of ease. The problem with us is we only get close to Allah during times of difficulty. Well, that's good. It's good. But there is something better. What is better? Times of ease. You have no problem right now. You have a job. You have a wife. You have a husband. You have children. You have a car. You have a house. You have a good salary. You have everything else. You have peace. You have serenity. You have get close to Allah now. You know why? The day difficulty is about to come in your direction. Allah will be closer to you. Allah will get closer to you. So this is why we say, when you lose a job, I'm giving you practical examples, right? And you say, oh Allah, give me. Wait, be patient. It might take a while. But if you do isti'jal, if you try, if you are impatient, you may not get it. Because you are saying, oh Allah, I'm calling out to you for the last 40 days. You did nothing. Astaghfirullah. That is an insult to Allah. Don't do that. 
My beloved brothers and sisters, patience or sabr is a virtue highly emphasized in Islam. Allah reminds us in the Quran, indeed Allah is with the patient. The powerful statement assures us that when we endure trials with patience, Allah's support, mercy and guidance are near. Life is filled with tests but embracing patience allows us to grow spiritually and strengthen our connection with Allah. Being patient doesn't mean passively enduring hardships. Rather, it's an active trust in Allah's plan. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam taught us that every difficulty we face is an opportunity to purify our sins and raise our ranks in the hereafter. When we encounter challenges, we should remind ourselves of the reward Allah has promised. Indeed, the patient will be given their reward without account. This infinite reward is a clear motivation to remain steadfast. Practicing patience also brings peace to our hearts. By trusting Allah, we ease our stress and avoid impulsive reactions, whether it's writing for a prayer to be answered or enduring a difficult situation. Patience is a sign of true faith. Let us strive to embody patience, knowing that Allah's rewards for it are far greater than we can imagine, both in this life and the next. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.